I ran up a check, I might do it again Enemies close, had me thinking they're friends Ten toes down, I'll be free until the end Crib outside the city, I don't feel safe in my ass Took so many years, I'm just waiting for the wins I'm in debt to no one but the one who took my sins I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend If I do it once, I do it again Add it up, add it up. bankroll, bankroll. Euro. Euro, peso, peso. Add, it up. add it up I'm just doing me, everything is on me Oh, you matter what? Welcome to Millionaire Before 30. As you can see, it looks a lot different today because unfortunately, uh, Ryan and Albert are out sick. The young bucks, the young men uh, caught something and, you know, it's it's kind of that season. So, you know, what? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep pushing forward. So this is going to be an exciting show. Uh, obviously a lot different um, because I don't have my amazing co-host with me, uh, co-hosts with me. And so uh, we're going to rock and roll. And I want to open up your, open up the show with something called the Rule of 72. And I'd be real interested if anybody on here without Googling it can tell me what the Rule of 72 is. I remember this. This is no joke. Sophomore year of high school. Uh, we had a sub come into a, um, a entrepreneur class. I actually had an entrepreneur class in high school and, uh, the sub came in and he put a hundred dollars, he put a hundred dollars on the board and he said, I'll give you a hundred dollars to anybody that can tell me what the rule of 72 was. Well, we, we don't know. We're like 16 years old. We don't know. We, we have never even heard of the rule of 72 or anything like that. So, um, obviously nobody got the hundred dollars and, uh, I guess apparently he had been doing this for years. So that tells you how far, how far financial literacy has gone, uh, since, uh, the late nineties because, um, I think a lot more people are aware of what the rule of 72 is, but let me break it down for you because I think it's really important as we have those goals of hitting, you know, being a millionaire, right? We, we have the path, we have the blueprint and we'll go over that in a second, but there's a blueprint to this, right? It starts with first doing a deal, replacing your job, paying off the debts and buying assets. That's what I'm talking about here. When I'm talking about the rule of 72, the rule of 72 is this and Alejandro, can you switch me to this guy here? So the rule of 72 is this, you take any uh, return on investment, right? ROI return on investment. Let's just say that the average uh, in the stock market, uh, the average with uh, maybe uh, lending money or whatever else, but for, the, for this case, uh, the average for the stock market or whatever else, if you put it in something like the S&P 500 is about 8%. Well, what you do is the rule of 72. Did anybody respond to knowing what the rule of 72 is? Okay, good. Okay. So 70, what you do is you divide it right? You divide 72 by whatever the return on investment is, and that equals nine. That's how many years it takes to double, double your investment. Investment, right? So if you put in $100,000 into something and you're getting an 8% return, it'll take you nine years for that to be 200,000. Right? And this obviously is the whole thing about compounding interest, right? This is it compounding, getting it, getting it double, 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 double. If you keep it in there for nine years, you double it to 200,000. So obviously the higher this number is divided by 72, that's how you get the velocity of, of money. That's how you get the velocity of building wealth is um, getting this at a higher percentage. That is why real estate it's so incredible, so seductive, right? It's so, uh, there's so many different things because unlike most investments, real estate, we get something called leverage, right? So let's say you buy that $200,000 property, okay? And you put 20% down on this. Here is your investment. You put down $40,000. That's your money. That's your investment. But this thing, let's say that you're in an area uh, that is appreciated, the average appreciation is 
Okay, so let's say that this is 3%, and by the way, it's been much different recently, obviously, with the, the supply and demand, with the interest rates being great, um, with, um, with, with people like understanding the value of home ownership, I think that that's been great. Um, so you've got 200,000 at 3% three, at, at 3 you're getting $6,000 in equity for doing nothing here. Obviously you've also got, if this is an investment property, you've got some debt pay down that plays into it, but let's just keep it simple. Let's keep it super, super, super simple. So you've got uh, 20,000, I mean 200,000 appreciating at 3%, but you've only got 40,000 into it. Now listen. Obviously, you've got closing costs into it. You've got repair costs going into it. You've got some vacancy costs. You've got a mortgage that you're paying on it, obviously, because you've got $160,000 in debt here if you put $40,000 down. But you're getting, for nothing, for just breathing, for just being uh, in your name, you're getting a return on an investment, $6,000 to the $40,000. And does somebody have a calculator, Daniel Alejandro? What is... Um, what is 6,000 divided by 40,000? 15%. Look at that, guys. 15%. You divide that by 72, and you're doubling. Your, how many years does it take you? It'll be five years before you double this. This is why owning real estate is one of those things where you buy it and you hold it and you forget about it for the next 20 years because while that's doing that, you're getting a 15% return and it's more than that, obviously. I haven't even gotten into what you're getting for cash flow, right? You've got a loan on this thing that's maybe maybe about $1,100. You're renting that thing out for $1,600. You've got some you've got some vacancy, you've got some repair costs, but let's say you make an, let's just say it's lean and you make an extra 200 bucks a month off of rent. You're making 2,400 bucks on top of this. Daniel, now tell me what's 8,400 divided by uh, 40,000. 21%. 21%! Do you see what I'm talking about here? Three years, that's 63%. So three and a half, three and a quarter years, you're doubling what you, you have made right here by it just appreciating, by it just existing, by your name, your company name, your name being on title. Isn't that incredible? That's what we're talking about, about buying assets. Remember, when you make money, it goes, well, here's the thing. <laughs> now, I, don't, I don't even know if you could do the four, four things here. Let's, let, let's keep this traditional. When you make money, first of all, let's, 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 let's remember right there. About, about in your lifetime, all, all over about 30% is going to go to tax. Let's just be honest. Whether that be your income tax, whether that be state tax, whether that be property tax, whether that be sales tax, whether that be death tax, whatever, all of these different taxes that come in is going to be about 30%. But then the rest, the remainder, you have two options, spend or invest. That's what we're talking about. Taxes go there. Boom. Spend or invest. Well, Brent, I want to spend. I want to go on great vacations. I want to take my kids to Disney and get the fast pass and get like custom, you know, tours throughout the thing and, and, and be and make a really special memory. Great. How much are you putting here? And how long do you want to do this? Right? If you're making money all the time, and this is what great people, great salespeople in the world, this is their biggest Achilles heel is because they make a ton of this and they know with their skills and ability and drive and hustle and passion and go, their engine, their motor is so strong that they know that they can keep making money. So why not just keep spending, baby? Why not like upgrade your life every single day or every month or every year, right? That's fine. But what are you putting here? What are you doing here? Because this is what makes it long term. This is what starts replacing your income. This investment, this money that you make from all of your investments, start replacing this. This you have to work for. This is work. This is income. This is what you do to make money. 
until this pays for this. Does that make sense? Like that is it, this is it, 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 it's a pretty I mean this is very crude, but this is really what it is. This is this is this is the whole point in generating re revenue, replacing your current job so that you can be a full-time entrepreneur so that your efforts, you can put more efforts into making more money that benefits you and your family the most as opposed to getting somebody else rich, right? Or working for the government or doing something, you know, doing something that, um, that you, your, your efforts are a return on investment for somebody else, whether it be a government or a company, right? When you get hired, they're like, okay, we'll pay you 50, 60 grand a year, but your job is either going to save us or make us uh, 500 or 600,000 a year or 300, 400,000 a year. Remember, if you're an employee, they're invested, you, that's an investment. They're, they're investing in you. Right, and you're making them money, and they're getting a big return from that. But I'm just the, what, what I'm saying here is when you start making the money, and you start investing it, and that investments these assets start returning these profits to you, and you start doing this, and you start uh, 10xing it or 100xing this, and all of a sudden this 8400 turns into 840 thousand dollars a year that's going towards your wealth. Now we're talking. I mean, that is the point, right? Like, wholesaling is amazing. Wholesaling is finding opportunities. Wholesaling is, is literally pulling uh, income out of the air, out of the ether, right? But why? Freedom. Choice. Right? That's what we want. What, we, what, what we're all striving for is the ability to have control of the time that we have on this planet and do something exciting with it and feed that monster inside of us that's like, I can do more, I can be more, right? That's the point of being an entrepreneur. It's in us. It's that seed that was planted at birth. I don't know why. I don't know why my brain's like this. I don't know why your brain's like this, but it is. Plenty of people are not increasing their financial literacy. They're not trying to uh, figure out how to win this whole wealth thing and actually take action on it. I mean, everybody wants to be able to control. Everybody. Well, I wouldn't even say that. I think some people like uh, being in a position where they don't have to have as much responsibility. And I think that's most of the people. But everybody wants control. They just, they're just not willing to do what it takes to get it. And their brain's just not wired that way. So um, this is what I'm talking about. Rule of 72. The, the beautiful thing about buying real estate and buying assets is leverage. Leverage, leverage, leverage. You're able to buy more. And in, with this 40000 getting this nice 21% return, uh, cash on cash return, uh, and the rule of 72, uh, three and a half years, you double that. Now you have 80. Now you're rolling. Now you're rolling. Now you're rolling. And all, obviously, you've got debt pay down here. You've got depreciation that you can do for taxes. I mean, there's so many benefits to finding the best properties in your marketplace at discounted properties and keeping them once you get to the point where your income is at a point where you can invest enough to start cherry picking these deals. All right. So you, that's where, you know, you want to get to that million dollars, right? This is millionaire before 30. It's very hard to do that if you're spending a lot of money. It is. I mean, the, the goal is a million dollar net worth before the age of 30. Do you know how incredible that is? Do you know how rare that is? Do you know how special that is? It's absolutely incredible. A million dollars before you're the age of 30. Most people in this country don't have that. They don't. And you're on the path to be able to do that. So, but... With that comes the sacrifice of maybe not spending as much on certain things that you want to do or buy so that you can invest more, so that you can get here faster, so that you can buy all those things forever, as opposed to just being a season in your life where you're falling out. I don't know how many times I've had conversations with people in real estate, whether they be real estate agents or investors or mortgage or lenders or whatever else, that were balling out for two, three, four, five years, and then went whoop, done, right? Because they get burnt out. 
They got burnt out of that daily hustle of working, 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 working all the time. Never put anything into investment. Always have to feel like they're behind, like the other shoe's going to drop because they're spending more as much as they're making after taxes. And then all of a sudden you're on that treadmill. You're on that um, that hamster wheel, right? That you're just standing in there and you're, you're just doing the same thing. You're moving. You're moving. You got a lot of enthusiasm. You're doing it. You're, 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 you're getting this wheel going, making some money, but you're not going anywhere, right? Step off the hamster wheel. Start investing. Start thinking about what you can invest in that's going to give you a great return. Use the rule of 72 to determine how fast that money is going to multiply itself and you are going to be in a phenomenal, phenomenal position. All right? Boom. There we go. Um, can we pull up real quick that uh, the blueprint? Because this is critical. This is critical for anybody. Listen, if you're watching this and you're over 30, that's great. You know, the, the point of this show is um, to bring financial literacy and make it cool and make it exciting um, for for people that are coming up, for people that are kind of, uh, the you know, I, I remember being 18, 19, 20, 22, not really knowing what the path was, kind of understanding a little bit, reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, reading Think and Grow Rich, um, you know, putting good stuff into my brain. Um, but a, a path to be able to do that, it, it, it just wasn't there. So that's what I'm going to show you here. This absolutely is the path. And it starts with doing a deal. It starts with just do a deal. That's, that's where the proof of concept comes in. That's where your faith turns to fact. And once your faith turns to fact, that's when you really, you're, there's, some, there's a switch in your brain that flips and goes, ah, I got this. I know I can do this. Like I can rinse and repeat this over and over. Next is replace whatever you can so that you can do full time in this business. Replace whatever other income you can so that you can go full time. Because if you get off the chain, you get unleashed, You you your whole day's open to hunt for opportunities, you're going to be unstoppable. You're going to be absolutely unstoppable. So get rid of, replace your income so that you are focused on this 100%, kill all debt, right? We got to make sure that we're not just making this money and we're putting it right back into other people's uh, ROI. That's all interest is, is a bank is, is putting you, you're their ROI. You're literally making cold calls and going on seller appointments so that you can pay some bank for some consumer uh, consumer uh, credit that you that you have. Some sort of consumer debt, sorry, consumer debt that you have. You're knocking on doors. You're, you're pulling lists from prop stream. You're getting deals done. And then, oh, here's, here, here you go, uh, government. Here you go, Uncle Sam. Here you go, uh, IRS. You got yours because that's rent to live in this country. Uh, but, uh, and then the other chunk of it, <laughs> the other chunk of it goes to an ROI on student loans. An ROI on credit cards. An ROI on whatever else, whatever whatever uh, other consumer debts that there is. So kill the debt. Then you can start investing that. You're, you're, you're becoming, when you are paying that interest, you're their little investment. Like, no, 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 no. You need to be your own investment. Kill the debt, invest in the assets, buy something that is going to appreciate, buy something that's going to give you cash flow, buy something that you can uh, you can put into the calculation with the rule of 72 and then boom baby, financial freedom. Just 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 take a breath, take a moment, take just just think about it. Imagine the perfect day. Imagine that you don't have to worry about paying bills. You don't have to worry about looking at what things cost at the grocery store. You're not worried about gas prices. You're not worried about your electric bill. You're not worried about, hmm, yeah, maybe I want to add Apple TV to my to my life. Maybe I want to buy this book. Maybe I want to go at the to the seminar. Maybe I want to join this program. Whatever it is. Whatever it is that you want to do. And, and, and you're going to set up your life. And you get to go, okay, well, I'm going to exercise here. And then I'm going to have lunch at my favorite spot. And then I'm going to spend time with the kids or my wife or my husband or whatever else. And I'm going to be providing value to the community. And you can do whatever you want. Imagine this. 
This is real life for people. I am telling you, you can do this. If you follow this, if you stay disciplined to it, if you go out there and you provide as much value as possible to the world and, and in return you get income, earned income, and turn that earned income into an investment and that asset then turns into passive income. Woo! What's that number? How much? How much a month? Is it 40 grand a month you want passive? Is it 80 grand a month you want passive? I want 200 grand a month passive, Brent. Great, let's go. It's all there. It's all wide open, you can do it. It's all wide open. It's just getting to that point, all right? It's just putting it in and taking those steps. First step, do a deal. Second step, replace your job. Third step, kill, the, kill your debt. Fourth step, buy assets. It's not gonna happen in a year. It's not gonna happen in five years. I, I, seven years. I tell everybody, I tell anybody on my staff, seven years, you stay with me seven years, you'll be a millionaire, without a doubt. I'm just telling you, that's the thing, seven years. If you are focused, if you're buying assets, if you're doing the right things, it's going to roll and roll and roll and roll. Rule of 72, baby. Boom! I will step off my soapbox. That was 21 minutes. That felt really good. I hope you got something out of that, guys. If you do, hit the like button, whatever it is. Throw some flames in this thing. Uh, subscribe. If you have not subscribed, make sure that you guys that you subscribe. This should be the only channel that you watch about real estate investing and wholesaling. Seriously, I truly believe that. I think everything else is just either a watered down version of this or uh, people just puffing their chest. I do. But you know what? People are talented. It, you know, grab what you need to. Um, but I would, I would just stay focused. Anyway, we're going to open this thing up, guys. I've got my computer here. I would love, we haven't done it in a while. I'd love to run some comps for you. If you got a, a tricky deal, if you got something that you're working on, obviously I'd love to celebrate any successes. And this is just going to be a free for all. This is kind of like a Brent Daniels live 2.0 after this point of talking about financial literacy. Um, I'll do my best to answer all of the questions that you have. Um, obviously, without Albert and Ryan here, um, it's it's going to just be through my uh, filter. So let's let's rock and roll on this thing. Any questions that you have, any comps that you have, whatever you want to do here, let's rock and roll. But remember, remember, remember the rule of 72. The rule of 72. All right? Good. What do we got, Hunter? Raymond, that's that that is it. Rule of seventy two, brother. Whatever your ROI, whatever your interest that you're earning, if you keep it in there and it's compounding, you divide that by seventy two, and that's how long, how many years it takes to double, to double your income. All right. So you put in, uh, let's say that you get a ten percent return then it will take you 7.2 years. You got to keep that money in there. You can't be pulling this money out. This is compounding, right? This is compounding. That's the whole beauty of compound. You, and if you go, have you ever uh, played that game where it's like, what would you like? Would you like a million dollars now? Or would you like a penny that doubles every day for the next 30 days? And it's like some bazillion dollars, right? So compounding interest is that, I mean, it's it's incredible. It's It's what really builds wealth it's when you put money at see the problem is you know in our minds we're used to using using money as soon as we get it and you and, and and doing what we can and then we get to the point where we develop our skills and build up um build up our business and we're, we're making really good income and then we're like okay i got some excess income and most people what they do is they just fill their life with an, uh, more liabilities and expenses to fit that what I'm trying to encourage you uh, encourage you is the cool thing, the smart thing, the wealth building thing to do is pump the brakes there, stay humble with it, and invest in assets so that there's going to be that day where everything flips and all of a sudden you're not working for money anymore. The money's just working for itself. Okay? Awesome. Great question, Raymond. Look at that. my hair is, whoo, I like it today. I don't know what I did different. It's a lot better than yesterday, Hondra. Uh, yesterday I was not happy with it, but today this is the, 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 the cabbage looks good. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Sure. <laughs> Sebastian, 
What do you know about digital real estate with NFT and all? Are you going in for kill it there as well? You know, Sebastian, I don't know. You know, it just depends. I don't know if there's going to be one platform that all of these spaces, all of this world's going to be, or if you can just create it. I mean, th there's people that are doing that. You know, you can buy this part of, uh, you know, uh, New York City, and you can buy this part of Chicago and San Francisco and all these other things that people are paying a ton of money for it. And I, I get it. Uh, but what happens if I want to live on Jupiter? What happens if I want to live in a different in a different solar system. I mean, it's all in our minds. That's, that's all this is. It's all, whatever's created is just fantasy. It's just whatever, you know what I mean? I get it. You get a blockchain and, and you own that and you can, you can transfer it. And if somebody else wants to buy it, you can, um, but I'm going to buy the real stuff because listen, even if you, whatever there's <laughs> servers need real estate, you know, until they start putting servers into, uh, you know, satellites or something, uh, they need real estate. So I'm going to focus on real estate here. Um, I would, I would love if anybody is in this game and doing it and it has some experience, I would love to have them on this show. Love it. But Sebastian, to answer your question, um, at this point, I think it's a, a shiny object. I think it's something to distract us. I think it's, you know, a lot of people think that this is like, uh, the Louisiana purchase, you know, where, uh, America bought, which is by the, by the way, the biggest, uh, wholesale deal of all time was the Louisiana purchase. It was gangster anyway. Uh, and they just let people go and they're like, Hey, if you want to move West, wherever you put your flag, you get, you know, a certain amount of, uh, of, of property and then, you know, build it up type of thing. Uh, it could be, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it could be, but, um, I don't know enough about it and I don't know if uh, what you buy is going to be real in 10, 20, 30, 40 years. You know what I mean? I know that this planet is real, so I'm going to focus on that. But if anybody, if anybody's playing this game, I would love to talk to them, talk to them about it. But I think at this, at this point, it's a, um, it's a, um, people are just kind of, forecasting that this is going to be very popular and very big and uh it's going to be something that apparently people can build things on the properties that they buy in nft i i mean i think it's cool but um i'm not into it like i'm not buying into it yeah for comping um give me as much of the four pillars as possible all right remember anytime that we have a conversation with anybody. I don't care if it's a real estate agent or the owner or another wholesaler, whatever else we need to know. Well, not another wholesaler because they already, they'll, they'll give us that info. But if we're talking to the property owner, anytime we're talking to the property owner or we're talking to a real estate agent, the conversation all revolves around four things, condition, of the property that's first timeline what is their timeline to sell this property the motivation what is their problem and what is the price that's it well I, Brent, i've never talked to somebody about real estate before i've never really like i, I kind of feel awkward i i don't want to like get on the phone with somebody and say the wrong thing great here's what you talk about this is the scaffolding this is the skeleton of your of your uh, conversations with every uh, property owner, and it starts here, literally started here, because they will open up about this easier, and then go to here. We can get you your money in thirty days. Will that work for you? No. Yes. Blah 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 blah. They'll tell you you get these two, and most of the time, if you do your job right, you get this, because they'll tell you. How's the condition? It's destroyed. It's fire damage. It had a flood. It's been vacant for years and broken into a ton. It needs a full remodel. It's original 1972 style, right? They're going to tell you. They're going to tell you in the condition. And it's just a way to comfortably ask them, you know, what is the problem here? To see if there's a problem here that you can solve. There has to be motivation. There has to be equity to do a wholesale deal. Okay? Boom. And then uh, obviously the price. So when you guys are throwing in the comps here, try to give me as much as the, much of these as possible. 
Uh, because if you're just like, oh, I'm just wondering about this property, that's nothing. I want you to have had a conversation with this owner. Don't just be like, oh, I saw this ugly house down the street and I want to know what I can offer them. No, you don't even know if they want to sell. It doesn't matter. It could change, you know, six months from now, three months from now, tomorrow, right? So don't worry about comping properties that you haven't talked to them. That's a huge mistake a lot of people do because they get excited and they go, oh my gosh, I'm going to look at this property, see what it's worth, and then I'm going to talk to the owner, and then I'm already going to be prepared for what they want, and I'm going to give them the offer, and it's going to be amazing, and I'm going to make so much money, right? No. No, no, no. Do they want to sell it? That's the first question. Do they want to sell it? Good. That work for you? I'm just making sure that the comps she sends in here for us to comp are... Uh, people that uh, have actually talked to the property owner so that we could do some work. What's up, Brent? Chris, 1188BB. BB. Uh, how should I present a deal to a buyer? What exactly is the right way and what should I say? That is great, Chris. Remember, here's the thing. <sighs> and I make this analogy. I, I didn't sigh like that because of the question. I'm sighing like this because I, I feel like there's a better way for me to like say this without saying like, drug dealers don't have to be good salespeople. You know what I mean? Like, if you have a discounted property in this market, it's like drugs to cash buyers. I mean, it's they're looking for it all the time. They're jonesing for it all the time. They're excited about it all the time. So one, you go with a lot of optimism. Two, you gotta hit the highlights of, of where this property's at. So what I like doing, if, if, it's a, if the zip code's like a hot zip code, like some zip codes are just hot zip codes. Go by that. If it's the county, go by that. If it's the township, go by that. If it's the neighborhood, go by that. Whatever's the big hook that a buyer will see that and be like, oh my gosh, you know what I mean? That property's in Biltmore? That's incredible. Boom, it pops and everybody looks at it. So the, remember, it's all about exposure. It's all about eyeballs. It's all about getting excitement from your buyers. And uh, that happens through you know making sure that when you blast it out and you're telling people if you're calling people up you have that hook hey listen i got a property in 85018 and it is unbelievable it's exactly i think what you're looking for check it out so listen it's like this chris hey here's the deal let me know if it's something that you'd be interested in and you'll know real quick if you've got a hot deal on your hands and if you if you put it if you get to the position which I want you to to building up a good cash buyer database where you have the emails and it all goes out at the same time now you have a bidding war now you have big deals this is how a fifteen thousand dollar deal turns into an eighteen five deal or a twenty one five deal or a whatever sixteen thousand dollar deal it, it, it gets bid up hey listen guys you're both at fifteen thousand just give me your best best offer on this. I'd love to work with both of you guys, but unfortunately, and you're not talking to them on three-way, but you're just talking to them individually and negotiating. Remember, healthy tension, right? It's like tension with a smile, right? You want to make sure that they're not running you over, steamrolling you when you have the deal. I want that deal. This is the price that you put it out with. I'm committed to this. You sell it to me for this. This is bullshit. Right? Get rid of those guys. Right? Just, hey, give me your best deal. Give me your best offer. And um, if it works, it works. Just stand firm. So, Chris, one, be really, really, really kind. Be really cool. Uh, be really, communicate very, very well. Even if you are delivering bad news, deliver it quickly and and be definite about it. Like, be, be cool about it. Be like, hey, listen, you know, Somebody else got this deal, but I'm coming up with more deals. I'm going to give you the opportunity. There's going to be more deals, okay? So, um, yeah, those are the conversations. Just get it out there. Make sure that you're getting a hook on where the what, what the big juiciness of that, where's the juice in that deal, and um, make sure that you're getting it out to as many people as possible and build that healthy tension. If you have a smoking deal, it's you don't need a lot of sales skills to sell it. <clears throat> Edwin, do you need to be a U.S. citizen to be part of this industry? I have a tremendous amount of phenomenal real estate wholesalers in Israel. I do. Actually, they have a whole group out there that is now run by one of my TTP family members that is absolute gal is out there, and he is crushing it. 
uh, with that group. And I encourage anybody, if they're watching this from Israel, um, to, to find that wholesaling group. Uh, I wish I had the name. Maybe somebody has the name on here. I don't know if he's named it yet. It's, it, it's new, but they get together and they do a great job. Um, Heim, Heim, Heim does it. Uh, what's his last name? I don't have my phone. But yeah, it, the, yeah, you don't. You, I mean, you could, you could do it virtually here. I mean, you got to get, get things set up. So I'd probably talk to some sort of um, corporate attorney or something on how to set it up and get a bank account and all that. But they're obviously doing it. Luis, there you are. Hi, TTP team. 4K deal a lot. Said it was not a deal, so I found a buy and hold buyer myself. He put his EMD this morning. Not a big one, but God is good. God is great, brother Luis. Come on. Here we go. Listen, that stacks up. I'm telling you, uh, 4K, man. 4K goes a long way. It really does. 40K is better, Luis. So let's keep our eye on the prize. Let's keep our eye on big, massive deals. 50K plus deals. We find what we're looking for, so we might as well be looking for it. Here we go. Waiting at another sell seller to review and sign a deal. Oh, my gosh. Full rehab, that's fine. I mean, it depends on the size there, but that is the perfect price point. I love it. Get that thing locked up for 410 I mean, I mean, uh, for two ten. I mean, that's that's interesting. I, I, you know, I'm curious on how much repairs that needs, because um, at two ten, I mean, whoo, if it it depends on the size of the house, but if it doesn't need a tremendous amount, that's going to be a really solid deal. Awesome. What if we can't find comps for our subject property, Edwin? Great, great question. Typically, there is comps. Um, if you don't have PropStream, ttpdata.com, uh, ttpdata.com, that is uh, where you can pull, you can do a lot of damage there, Edwin. So I hope that you have it, um, and and you can pull, there. they've got this great thing, in, and I'll, I'm sure I'll show it when somebody puts in an address to comp, but um, there is a neighborhood button that you can click that shows all the 100 properties that are closest, and then you try to find which one's the most recent, most the, the one that's... Uh, the most like your subject property and that really works and if there's nothing like that then you find and usually if there's nothing like that then you're really rural which is cool that's fine and you need to talk to a real estate agent in that area and um, not one of the top top ones because they're gonna know the property owner probably if it's a small town somebody that's kind of lower down um, you, you you find them on realtor.com you go to find real estate agent you put it in the area the city the zip code whatever it is and then you start calling the ones from the bottom and be like, hey, you know, I'm just wondering if you could comp this property. I'm, I'm buying it, and I wanted to know what it would sell for once it's fixed up. And then they give you a response, and that's a good way. That's the best way. If there's literally no comps, you need to find somebody that knows the market well. Awesome. Killing it, man. Uh, Albert, there it is. I miss you too, brother. I miss you too. Yeah, next week we'll get this going. I hope you feel better. Um Show's not the same without you, but I'll I'll, I'll do my best to uh, to put it on my back and uh, and carry it forward. But um, excited to see you next week, and we'll have a phenomenal show. Get better, Albert. Uh, what can be accomplished with 65k and a 660 FICO score, but a thin profile? Um, it just depends. I mean, if you're looking to, um, well, first of all, what I would do is I would probably you need to get that credit score above a 720. Uh, so get it up there. There's a lot of different things that you can do. I remember my credit score DL was the lowest of the low. I mean, I gave back five business credit cards, two personal credit cards, two cars, five houses. Like my credit was destroyed. I couldn't even, this is what's so crazy. And I think a lot of people need to hear this. I couldn't open up a credit. I, I couldn't open up a checking account. I'm serious. I was not allowed. I was like blacklisted from even putting money into the bank. I couldn't get a pay, I couldn't get a uh, account at uh, at Chase. I couldn't get it at Wells Fargo. I couldn't get it at Bank of America. And this is 2010, 2010. And so I had to go to a local bank, National Bank of Arizona, that wasn't on whatever database these bigger uh, banks were on to get to get a checking account. For real. 
No, you know what I did? I got a I got an online one where you had to send in two hundred dollars and they let you get it. It was like a white card. I forget what it was called. Simple or something like that. And then I got the the national bank. Anyway, I couldn't even get a, a checking account. And then I went and um, I had a gal. Oh shoot! I need to get Stephanie Black, and I I, I don't Stephanie Black. I'll probably put Stephanie Black credit score repair or something. And there's a pl- plenty of different people um, that are on social media that do the credit report. But there are certain things that they can do. Boom! I went from like I don't know 400 or something to like a like a 680 in like six. They removed a ton of stuff. It was bananas. It cost about a thousand bucks. About I know about 1500 bucks total, but it was over like six months and my credit went through the roof. So I would, I would do everything. If you're in that position, if you're under a 720 credit score and, and you have some things on your credit, I would have a, a credit repair company go to bat for you um, because it's worth it for sure. Um, and then I don't, I don't deal. I'm not real sure what you mean by a thin profile. I don't know if that means you're like shredded. You know what I mean? Like you're like a, like a, like a, Bruce Lee type of body, or if that means like you are like not a lot of job history, and um, and that's fine. I mean, listen, you could do creative financing, you could do seller financing. Seller financing is phenomenal opportunity there. Um, but right now, I mean, if you got sixty five k, I would uh, if you can find, um, I, I I would just keep building that up, getting your credit score. Take the next couple years to get job history. And you're going to be like a, the golden ticket. You're going to have 10 golden tickets. That's what they give you for traditional loans for one person is 10 mortgages that you can get on yourself. And then you can go to other banks to increase that. Um, but I would just I would just keep rocking. If, you, if it's a job history thing, DL, then bank that money, bro. Bank it or gal. Is it gal? Bro and broette? I don't know. The gal, I'll say gal. That's what I say anyway. So, uh, and uh, and then you got uh, a, a ton of money in there, and you are uh, you're ready to rock and roll in a couple of years. So that's great. Or or go after creative financing. If you can't get approved for a traditional loan, don't get into a loan that's super high interest just because you're like, oh, I need to buy this property. All right, just just wait that out or um, find find all the owners in your area that own their properties free and clear and uh, and see if they want to be the bank and do some seller financing. There we go, Seth, absolutely. Here we go. information once you get the interested. What's, uh, what's the details? Okay, condition is good, timeline can close in less than two weeks, motivation is foreclosure. Ooh, I love that. So. All we should put that. Can you put that mic on you? Yeah. You know what I mean. Um, so what is the deal? So it's pre. Oh, look at this. All right. Do you want to put my um, screen on here? Put me in the corner. All right, guys. Uh, look at this. This is fantastic. Thank you, Seth. Um, look at this. Pre foreclosure. Okay. Let's take a look at this thing. We've got a pre foreclosure. Looks like it's coming up. Whoa! It was. It's in five days. Bro, this is perfect because what you can do is you can talk to the homeowner and say, listen, where is he? Listen, Wallace, Wally, bro, you're going to lose this thing in five days. I can work to get this deal postponed. You can call um, the trustee here. Notice the trustee, document number. There you go. Here's your case number. I'm really interested to know who the uh, trustee is. So find out who the trustee is on this and call them up. And um, you could probably Google this here and find out um, and, and call this building and say, who who can I tr- talk to that's a trustee for the foreclosures? And then uh, get that postponed. It's a huge thing. You need to get it postponed. You're not going to get this thing done in five days. I'm telling you, not in Florida. So... Um, you need to get this thing pushed out and postponed, and that's your ammo, Seth, if they're being reasonable. Now, it looks like the auction bid is at 80000 okay? And it looks like they've got uh, a decent amount of equity here, so that's good. They owe seventy four, but with all, the, with all the penalties and whatever else, it's up to eighty, probably more than that. 
uh, what I like to do is first take an aerial shot of this, right? We're taking a look here and we're seeing what's going on. And it's probably both these lots, I would assume, here. And I want to see what's surrounding it, what's by it. So there's nothing major. The It's far enough from these major roads. It's not a major road. It's not a freeway. There's not a train track real close by. This is in a nice populated area. This should be pretty um, easy to comp here. It is on a double lot, which is fantastic. But most, a lot of people think that like double lots give people a tremendous amount of extra value, which it, it, it does. But I always comp it like it's the same. I really do. I, I take the extra lot as a bonus and um, and, uh, and and try to go after it as if it was just sitting on a regular size lot. It's just a good mentality for 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 um, when you're offering. Okay? Uh, and I don't see any MLS, so he hasn't put it on the MLS. That's fantastic. So this is the button that I was talking about. And here's the thing. First, I want to look here. This is really interesting. Look at all these comps. Seth, come on, bro. Look at all these comps. One, two, three. 200, 180, 189. Perfect. Look at these. Three twos. Similar size. Fantastic. 190 to 200. You've got this guy, but look at this. This guy at 200 built in 2000. Oh, you were built in 99. This is great. This is fantastic. So these guys are, these guys are a little bit too old. You're built, um, I would just go 1999 and see how that affects things. Yeah, there's your comps. So you've got, bro, you got one right there, sold in July, 3 2, 1200 square feet, same, similar size lot. Oh, it's not a double lot, it's just the, the lot lines were pushed over. You, you're looking at this one, look at this. This one went for 200,000. It doesn't have floors in it. It doesn't have floors in it. It's very basic. That's bananas. So this makes me want to go into the neighborhood. I want to see what's going on in the neighborhood here. And we're going to go sale type. So that went 200 with no floors and no upgrades. So you're probably 220, uh, 225 on this thing. Uh, I'm trying to see if anything has been there. There's one 215, uh, older property, 217, the Oaks. 2009, great, 2,000 square, but that's 2,000 square feet. Let's take a look here. Not much to go off of here. Not sure. They just sold this garage for it, no. Um, yeah, I would say, I would say to be safe, let's call it 215. Um, and let me just make sure, let me check real quick on that comparables again. I just wanna make sure, sometimes when you go and you see 200, it's after they flipped it, and the MLS pictures are uh, before they flip. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, MLS details. Yeah, see, they sold it right here. Boom, 145. 145 without that, and then they sold it for 200. So fixed up 200. Um, that's the right price. Good thing I went back. So it went 200. And uh, they sold it after buying it here at 145. So just depending on your on the condition of your property, um, and let's take a look here to see if um, if we can pull the Google Maps and see the front of this thing and see if it's. But it's a newer property. Oh geez, I don't know if I'm going to get a view on this thing. Uh, a little bit. Okay, there it is, right here. It looks clean. Good. Okay, good. 200 your ARV. The one down the street, fixed up. Went 145 in February and then just sold in the summer for 200. Boom. Seth, how much do they want, bud? <clears throat> Let me know that. There we go. Get him, Seth. Um, so at 200, I mean, I would want to be, I, that, that, that guy bought it for 145, it just depends on the condition. They probably put 15 into it, 20K into it. Uh, so they're at 165, called 170, sold it for 200. It's thin. That's a thin deal. Depends on how much do they put into it. So I would like that thing closer to 120, to be honest. 125. Or for you, you know, 120, sell that thing for 135. That's what I'd be looking at. Unless it's like, you know, there's foundation or the roof was burnt down or something crazy has gone on inside. Pensacola. I always thought that was a, a really cool name for a town. Pensacola, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Brent. Yay, Jerry, look at that hat. There, that's what I'm talking about. We sent this way, thanks for yeah. Thanksgiving. Yeah, Jerry. I've had the, the rule of 72 to talk with my kids, but none of them took it to heart. Any suggestions? Uh, do they want, don't want them repeating my 30 years. They have to be open to it, Jerry. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's just reps. Sometimes it's just uh, they need to see you doing it. You know what I mean? They need to see what the, the, the true advantage of it is. But I get it. Listen, I've had this conversation with a lot of people with a lot of uh, um, faded out eyes. You know what I mean? They just gloss over when you start talking anything about ROI or in, uh, interest or wealth building. It's just like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand why people aren't pushing hard. It was really interesting. We had Cody Sperber in, uh, the clever investor, on Monday, and he's like, and he he's obviously had this uh, conversation or speech before, and he's like, what is it going to be? Is it going to be the government or is it going to be your family that takes care of you when you get older? Because that's that's like ninety percent of people, right? Maybe more. Maybe it's then you know ninety nine percent of people. I don't know, but it's like. You only have a certain window of opportunity to be really, really, really um, productive. Now, real estate's different because we can kind of do this forever. But at some point, you know, things slow down, right? So who's going to take care of you when you get older? Do you have enough saved up? $1.8 million is not enough. It's not enough. Not by the time that you're 90. Do you know what, do, do you know what like 10, 10 grand was worth 90 years ago? I mean, come on. In 1931, when my grandma was born, literally today, it's her birthday. Happy birthday, grandma. Uh, 90 years ago, I, you could buy a house in the 60s for five grand. In the 60s. That's 30 years after. Can you imagine how much you need to be able to produce and keep and grow now? When, when you're going to be 90, you know, at like... 2070, 2060, whatever it is, 2050. We got to go. We got to push while we have these legs. We got to push while we have this strength. We got to push while we have these stars in our eyes. We really do. So, Jerry, listen, it's on you. It's lead by example. That's it. Just do your thing. Just be super proactive and be super excited and have a lot of energy and, uh, and, and, and bring that passion to your, to your children. And they'll see, or they won't. And listen, happiness, people can live a happy life living in a van. I have a friend that I grew up with that lives in, the van, lives in a van on the weekends in the wilderness. And he's like super happy, right? He's super happy for now. I mean, I don't know how it's going to go when he gets older, right? But what, it just depends on what makes people happy and what fulfills them. You can't force it. You know what I mean? This isn't. Um, some sort of dictator rule type of thing. I think we should have a, a test with you in a van, Brent. <laughs> Me in a van? Like just sleeping in a van? Yeah. Oh, I won't coffee, ask. No. Oh, yeah. Calling. Just call, have a mobile mobile show? Mobile show. Hey, I'll do it. Uh, Daniel, see how much a Sprinter van costs, will you? <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm, I, I'm totally kidding. We're going to do a whole studio. Yeah, and I'm getting in. I studied and studied the point of paralysis by analysis by joining your program. How will it help me? Can you celebrate? Because uh, Elaborate because I'm very interested. Um, yeah, Chris, the beautiful thing about um, coaching is you just have to do the actual income producing activity of talking to people. So when people come into my program, the reason that they're so successful is it's almost like I, I, I magically pluck out all of the education, leave the confidence. You're going to know who to talk to, what to say, and how to be efficient. Leave the confidence in there so that you can make those calls, which is what really moves the ball down the field, moves the needle, moves whatever, whatever analogy you want to put there, right? That's the momentum of the train going, you know, that's the engine. So the reason you're stuck in there is because you probably have, you probably don't have that 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 coach that mentor that's been there that's showing you the ropes that you can reach out to any time and that's what i provide so that's what that's what gets me excited you know what i mean is is making sure that um that you get there faster and do bigger deals so that's it it's accountability 
it's pushing, it's uh, making sure that you're always improving and making sure that you're always doing bigger things and cutting out all that paralysis by analysis because I've got it here. You're just leveraging this. You're leveraging the experience and the experience of my entire company. So it's pretty dope. If you're interested, um, what is it, TTP Call? Yeah, ttpcall.com. Yeah, that's the coaching program there. You can sign up, talk to the guys, uh, see if it's the right fit for you. Uh, very reasonable compared to, uh, to most programs. Hi, Brent. Tell me honestly, virtually driving for dollars or actual driving for dollars? Uh, actual. Yeah. Yeah, um, Pujat, it is, uh, actual is always going to be better because you're, you're, it's like walking through the grocery store and, and, and checking out your inventory, you know, or, or checking out whatever inventory you have. Um, you know, you're walking through Costco and you're checking out things and you're picking out the best deals type of thing. You know what I mean? Like, uh, in person is always better, but some people can't do it. And some people want to leverage VAs and some people want to, um, do it from the comfort of their home. They don't want to feel creepy driving around neighborhoods. I don't think it's creepy. I mean, I did it forever. That's how I did my first 20 deals was driving for dollars. Um, and Deal Machine makes it super easy to do both, right? Um, and so as long as you're leveraging uh, Deal Machine and then using um, either, either using their um, attachment, their Google Chrome attachment to drive virtually, and there's a video, if you guys are interested, there's a video on this channel on how to do that. Um, and then, uh, but in person for sure. And by the way, Pujan, I will always be honest with you. <laughs> hey, Brent, what do you think about wholesaling on market properties? Actually, man, I wish I had my uh, my partner Ryan Zolan here for this. This is this is all he does, actually. I mean, th I mean, not all he does, but it's it's eighty. We'll call eighty percent of the deals that he does. He absolutely crushes it. He's got his own technique. He's got his own strategy with it. He's got his own, you know, Google sheets or Excel sheets that he looks at and reviews which which um, properties are likely. Um, but it's good. You just have to get it. You got to get it at a discount, and you have to have a really good, strong buyer base. If you don't have a buyer base, if you're just starting out and you don't have a good, strong, robust buyer base, or can't leverage somebody else's, you know, some other wholesaler, um, some other mentor, somebody that's in your market that you can. You, you know, they can help you dispo your deals. Um, I would say stay off market for sure. Um, but you have to get it if, if the price is typically, this isn't every market, because if you jump on something early in San Francisco and you grab it, you know, 30 days later, it's worth 60 grand more or something. You know what I mean? So sometimes you can play that game. I don't think it's a smart game. I don't think it's a long game. But what I would say is if it's listed at five, you need to lock it up at four. You know what I mean? And then sell for four twenty-five, and now somebody goes. They can talk at barbecues for the next 15, 20 years, or at Christmas dinner, and be like, <laughs> "Oh, I am such a savvy investor, Bill. You don't even know, little brother. I got a deal that was listed on the market for five hundred, and I got it for four twenty-five. Can you believe it?" <laughs> Oh, you'll never be as smart as me, dumb little brother. Right? <laughs> Man, that's fantasy. But, but people brag about, you know, oh, my gosh, the market's so hot and there's multiple offers and all these other things. And if you can get something that's, like, not, that's less than market, people feel really pumped about that. But it has to show that it was listed high and sold low. Uh, because if not, if you lock it up at 485, it's on the market for five, they'll be like, I'll just wait till you cancel you know, if you can't sell it, I'll just wait till you cancel. I'll just buy it from this agent. I'll put it in a backup offer with this agent. Silly Bill and the little brother. J.M. Wallace. Question. Can I wholesale an off-market property on the MLS? If so, how do I do it? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. It depends. That's the answer. Um, <laughs> and that's not, that, that's classic. That's a classic attorney answer. Anything that you ask an attorney, they're going to respond with, it depends. Um, the, uh, it depends on your MLS, if your MLS will allow it. Typically, like here, they require you to have a full listing agreement with the seller. So you have to have the full listing agreement, you have to have all the paperwork, you have to have all the disclosures, you have to have all these things that the MLS requires to put a property on the market. And they really don't like 
They really don't like it. They've uh, they told us twice uh, a, a few years ago that they didn't like it, so we stopped. And it doesn't matter. We make more off market than we do on market, which is crazy. The second part you have to realize is this. Uh, and by the way, a lot of people do this strategy and do it really well. So I would check with your uh, local MLS and say, and ask them what their policy is. If you have control but not ownership of the property, what's the best way to list the property? I already assume that they're going to do it, right? What's the best way for me to list the property? What paperwork do I need uh, to put together for me to put it on the market once I control the property? And if they're like, well, you don't own it, you only control it, you can't do it. And they'll, they'll, they'll just block your listing. You could try it. You could put it up there. But they'll probably block it at some point. Uh, and then and then kick you off of this, the system, which would be terrible. So uh, Or terrible for whatever agent that you're leveraging to put them on there. The other thing is if, if they're cool with it and you're cool telling the seller, hey, listen, I'm going to put it on the MLS. We're going to do this and this. And the seller's cool with that. Uh, great. The problem is when you put it on the MLS, it goes to every website in the world. There's something called IDX. And IDX connects to all of the different platforms, the the Zillow's, the Trulia's, the Realtor.com's, the whatever other real estate websites that there are in the world uh, sees that property, which is great exposure. But your name, I mean, your seller needs to understand that this isn't going to just be some silent deal, right? If their biggest thing, you're having a conversation with this property owner, they're like, I don't want to put it on the market. I don't want to put a lot of, you know, I just don't want a lot of people coming through the house. I don't want my neighbors know that I'm selling this. Blah 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 blah. Um, then don't put it, don't put it on the market. I mean, just don't put it on the market. If it's a vacant house, some out of state owner, they don't care either way. They're just like, give me the deal, whatever. That's a different thing. But how often does that happen? A few times a year, maybe ten, right? Um, so build your cash buyer database, Jan. Build your cash buyer database. Um, yeah, the other thing real quick, just, just for one second here, the, uh, when you put it on the MLS, agents will not understand that you don't own it, <laughs> that you have to educate agents all the time and it is a nightmare. But if you have, you know, you can do it, you can navigate it. It's a nightmare to me. It might not be a nightmare to you. Um, so if you're like, yeah, I can deal with agents. I can explain it to them. I can do whatever. I don't care. People do that. People do that every day. So check with the MLS and uh, just understand how much education you want to give to real estate agents. All right. What type of list would you suggest I skip trace now during this time, Nathan? Drive for dollars. <clears throat> Drive for dollars. 80% of, of uh, new real estate wholesalers get their first deals from Drive for dollars, me included. Um, I really like tired landlords, even though it's a really tough list because everybody calls it. Um, I really like tired multifamilies owned by LLCs uh, because batch skip tracing can pull those. I really like um, vacant land. Um, and yeah, I, I don't mind if you want to go after, we're going to have to listen at some point, we're going to have to flip this thing over. We're going to have to go for owner-occupied properties that have equity. It's a tough sledding. You have to talk to a whole lot more. Uh, there's a lot more emotions, and you gotta you got to deal with a lot more people that think their property is worth more. But there's going to be deals there, and the, the saturation level is going to be lower. So I, I, I would suggest, if you haven't, pull a list like you pulled the tired landlord list, right? It was built before 1990. They've owned it for at least seven years. Uh I like going after properties that are 2,000 square feet and below because it's an easier rehab for um, for builders. I mean, for for fix and flippers. Um, and but just do it owner occupied. And um, and and start testing that. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to start dipping in there. It's not. It's it, there's literally no signs of distress. Besides the age of the house and the ownership, and we're just making assumptions. That they'll want to sell because most people own their properties on average seven years and if they beat it up if it's not in good shape if they bought it if they inherited it if they no longer live there they bought something else they just didn't let the county know that it's a rental property now which happens all the time those are good opportunities you like that deep voice yeah you ready to come for another property i'm ready 
There he is, Rogelio, uh, 5813, North Washington. Uh, 5813, I am not, maybe it's not North Washington? Let me see. And that is the Las Vegas, got it. It is West Rogelio. Um, but I get it. Maybe you threw it in there so that people watching it later won't go after. But you'll lock it up before then. Um, details. And by the way, what's uh, do we have any fillers here? Yes. So condition is livable condition. Livable condition. Livable. Are you on mic? Yeah. Okay, good. Tenant ran into a garage a little, so they have a dent for that. Timeline Ooh. is we should be closing in 60 days. Mm -hmm. Motivation doesn't need the house. Elderly lady, mm -hmm. and the price is two thirty. What do you see first off in this picture? What do you see? Um, a lot of houses, and it's on a major road. Mm -hmm. Major road. This is going to take. Anytime it's on a major road, guys, you got to take ten to twenty percent off. Now let's see how major this is. Uh, we got two lanes. We got a suicide lane. We got five lanes here, people. Five lanes. Look at this beauty. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. And it's right by the light. Oh, that's 20% off. I'm telling you right now, it's 20% off. Is that off. an extra 20% off or is that? So we're going to comp it in the neighborhood and then we're going to subtract 20% off of that. Yep. We're going to take a look at this thing because it's right by the light. I mean, it's right. Uh, and listen. Maybe not. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what the comps do. do. Let, let's let them talk to us. Um, let's let the comps talk to us here and see if there's... But what I'm looking for, Honda, is I'm looking for something that's on that major road right there. Number nine. Boom. Beautiful. Number nine. Where are you, number nine? Washington, 306. Great. 1,400 square feet. It says it's a 4-1, but I highly doubt it. Let's take a look at this guy. This one went in May for 306. I bet it's decked out, but we'll see. Vegas uh, has been appreciating really well as well. Let's take a look at these picks. Right by the right by this light, perfect comp. This is the perfect comp, and it's right there in the in, in the, the in the too. zone. See, this isn't fantastic. I mean, it's decent. It's decent. Let me see if there's. I mean. What is so special about this? Is it the driveway? No. Is it the backyard? No. I mean, 300, and this is 1,400 square feet. Let's make sure that it actually sold for that amount. Let's take a look. Sold 306 in 36, 37 days. Freshly painted, inside out. Is it really one bathroom? Wow. It can't be. Wow. Let me take a look here. Where are you? Okay. Here we go. Okay, good. What's what's number three here? Three here, nothing. Let me go to both here. I want to get both of these and see if there's anything on the market. Here we go. Uh, 21. Is 21 on... The street, yeah, no, that looks like a bigger building. Yeah, 21's a townhouse. So that one went 305, 306 on the street there. Very close, right by a light. Fantastic. 19, that's our guy, 306. So we are at two baths. Um, so I would probably go aggressive. If you got two baths... Uh, I would say 300. What does she want? It said. Let me see what's going on here. I don't understand why that one went. It said she wanted 230. She wanted 230. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look at some of these neighbors. Okay. Good. 230. So let's let's look at this. So this is 1,200 square feet. It needs some love, right? And let's just say it goes for 300000 maybe more, but I want to be conservative. So we got ARV, 
300,000, okay? We're going to times this by 0.84, right? 10% for the profit. That's a crazy R. And uh, closing costs and holding costs, okay? And then we're going to subtract. It's 1,200 square feet. Can you put up the chart, Alejandro, so everybody can see that of the rehab estimator? Is it going to take a while to find it? Yeah, I'm going to have to find it. Okay. So I'm going to just say for 12, 1248, just looking at this thing from the outside, plus a garage door, I'm going to add five grand for that. I'm going to put this thing conservatively nice, um, or I should say aggressively at 40K rehab. It could be less, but I'm going to do it at 40K. Okay. And then this is going to be your wholesale, what you're going to be able to wholesale this at. So, Daniel, calculator man, 300 times 0 0.84. 300 times 0 0.84. 252. Minus 40. 212. 212. That's probably your wholesale price on that. So then I like making at least 20 grand, right? So then I'm going to minus the uh, assignment fee. And so I'll be at 192. So you got some work to do. God, that's terrible handwriting. I wonder what that is. I wonder what that is in my brain that makes me have terrible handwriting. I don't know. Anyway, um, 192 is, is what you need to get it down to. And here's a chart just if you need some fix up there. I put I put 40K because, wow, this is bad. I just don't know. I'm going to make some assumptions. And so this is a great fix and flip. You can get rid of me on this so everybody can see it. This is a great uh, estimator. And then if there's anything major, this is just to get it in good shape, right? And then and if there's anything extra mechanical that needs to be done, a garage door, a roof, pool equipment, a boiler, air conditioner, whatever it is, I add 5K for each of those, unless it's like super high end. Guys, listen, this isn't, this is a, this is just a, a, a big brush, okay? If you want to get more refined with how much it's going to cost, I'm just telling you, I've used that chart forever, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And we average 40K a deal. You know what I mean? So something must be working. This is what my TTP students use, and they're crushing it every single day uh, using this. So, um, you know, do what you want to use for repair costs and for equations to come up with ARV, or, I mean, uh, with your offer price. Um, I'm just telling you, this is the best that works that I've seen. So there you go. Brandon, hey Brent, I just got a deal assigned to a buyer and they've been waiting on title to check for background liens. How long does this process take? Uh, it takes a while. I mean, it just depends, Brandon. So a couple different things. It depends on how long your escrow period is. Typically it's 30 days. We set it for 30 days because sometimes it takes title longer than others. Now, listen, some title companies are a lot faster and a lot better than others. Some of them are a lot slower. Got to make sure that you're working with the best. I'm telling you. Your escrow officer will make or break your business. I am telling you, it'll make or break your business. They're either going to have all these things set up and in a row for you and ready to rock and roll, or it's going to be like, it's going to take forever and they're not going to communicate and it's going to be a nightmare. So make sure that your escrow officer is a baller, is crushing, is like has that has that uh, experience and has that fire to get these deals done. And so what the holdup brand and typically is, is when they reach out to the seller, to the actual owner, or is the owner communicating with the title company to make sure that they're getting all the information they need to talk to the lien holders so that they can get payoff information. That's what takes long. But typically that's, that's typical. We have a second question. Yeah. Brilliant. How long does it take for title to close on a property? That one? Yeah. It's the same question. Oh. Yeah, it's the same question. My bad. 
He just worded it different. Uh, it just depends, Brandon. It depends on how sticky the title is, how clouded it is. The more clouded, the longer it takes. Clouded means that there's a bunch of different liens, and they have to get payoffs for them. That's all it means. It means boom, 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 there's four liens. We need to get the phone number, talk to all of them, get the payoff information. And some people that have liens take a week to respond, take two weeks to respond. They're like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? So you're kind of at the mercy of that. Caxi, that's a cool word uh, or name. If a seller's behind on taxes, would the final end buyer pay for that or the seller? The seller. How would you that, that process be? Would you combine how much the seller owes in taxes plus purchase price? No, what I would say is I would come up with a price and just say, hey, listen, whatever, this is the price that I can give you. Whatever you owe on it, whatever mortgage or taxes that you still owe on it, it's going to come out of that and you're going to net the rest. Okay? Now, what some sellers will go is, well, I want to walk away with 100 grand. And you're like, okay, well, what do you owe in taxes? Or you could pull it up on Prop Street. And they're like, um, 15000 Okay, so you want an offer for 115000 Yes. Boom. 115000 Then you sell it for one thirty five. So it comes out of the seller. I mean, you can pay it. It's it's all the same. The buyer pays it anyway. Remember, the money, all the money that pays you, that pays the seller, pays off liens, all comes from the buyer anyway. So if you know, it just depends on how you want to slice and dice that up. If it want, if you, if they're like, no, I want it to say I get a hundred thousand and you pay for my lien. Great, it's still one hundred and fifteen. You know what I mean? Like. Okay, great. I'm going to build that into the purchase price so that it gets paid. And so I'll give you, instead of an offer at 100, I'll give you an offer at 115. Ryan, sent out two offers. I'll be back for you to ring that bell. I'm ready. Let's go, Ryan. I mean, you know I'm ready. What do, you, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think I do this for? Come on. It's to ring the bell. That's it. <laughs> No, uh, brother, get out there. Let us know. Love to celebrate it. Get that. Get them locked up. Get them locked up. Over communicate. Ashley, what do you do if the property owner and his wife are deceased? Property has been vacant for years. You got to try to find uh, a relative, right? You got to try to find a relative. And so uh, a couple different things, Ashley. So you can go out into the neighborhood and see if the neighbors know the scoop. Some of them have phone numbers for whoever's the caretaker of the property or for whoever is responsible for the property or for whoever is paying property taxes. I would see, what I would do is kind of pull the thread on, uh, are they paying their property taxes, right? You can go to the, ta the, the county assessor site or the treasurer's assessor site, wherever the property taxes are, are, um, are paid and shown and um and see if they've been paid if they've been paid somebody's taking care of it if they haven't been that's a whole different issue if they owe like three years and back property taxes um it's gonna be tough it's gonna be tough you're gonna have to find somebody that has a tlo tlo account <clears throat> and you can find them on upwork or or um uh, fiverr and um, they're VAs that have access to these TLO accounts to do research for attorneys and mortgage people and, and people that um, are, are debt collectors <clears throat> and, uh, and see, pull, pull the address and have them pull all of the relatives connected to the deceased and then start calling them one by one. But it's not something that you typically get with like a batch skip tracing or any of the skip tracing companies. You gotta get it from something like TLO because TLO TransUnion, let, let, let's <clears throat> let me let me pull the wool from everybody's eyes here, so everybody can get a clear idea of what's going on. You're tracked at all times. I'm telling you, I am telling you, you're tracked at all times. TLO and the credit unions know everything about you. Credit score tracks everything. Not only that, but uh, there's literal cars and cameras everywhere in every town tracking everything. Like, it was really creepy seeing the full potential of TLO. I talk about it all the time. It was really creepy. They will show you the 10 places that your car is parked the most. Yeah. That's why, I mean, you can't, 
I, there's a show about this where it's like a bunch of bounty hunters and people go off the grid and they find them in like 15 minutes or whatever. It's crazy. Anyway. It's a great show. What was it called? I don't know, but is it the guy from Hawaii? No. Oh, dude. Not Dog best. the Bounty Hunter. Yes. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. But you got to kind of be like that, Ashley. You got to be Dog the Bounty Hunter. Just, uh, you know, kind of pull, pull that. that yeah. Yeah. Adrian, are all title companies wholesale friendly? I asked because I reach out to some. No, most aren't. 90% aren't. You really have to get a referral to somebody that's great that does wholesale. So post to the Facebook groups, talk to meetups. Uh, almost every single time you go to a RIA, a Real Estate Investor Association in your area, there will be some title agent that is represented there. That's where they go to you know, get business. And it's a smart idea. But the best ones are busy doing deals and they are um, phenomenal. And so just get a referral from anybody that is doing business in that area. Anybody that's doing a bunch of wholesale, just ask them who their escrow officer is that they use. And if somebody's not going to tell you who their escrow officer is that they use, it's just a weird person. <laughs> right? Literally. I mean, it's just, that's weird. Mother lover, where do I get earnest money from? Um, well... That's a broad question, but I'll try to pick it apart here. Um, first off, <clears throat> earnest money could be a dollar. Earnest money could be ten dollars, right? Um, so if you're talking about your earnest money, it depends on how much. It depends on if, if you even need earnest money. So I'd find out in your state. Do you need? Uh, if do you need consideration? That's what it's called, consideration or earnest money. Do you need to have some sort of consideration for uh, a contract to be valid? Okay, that's the first thing. If you don't, then you don't have to you, you don't have to get earnest money from anywhere. Um, now, when it comes to selling your deals, we require a five thousand dollar non refundable earnest deposit from the cash buyer deposited at the title company. And that shows us that this is a serious buyer. They actually have cash. They're actually willing to risk it because they're committed to this deal, and it's enough money to make it hurt but not too much money to where they're like, no, I, that, that makes me uncomfortable. All right. So, um, that's where you get it from. Mother lover. Mother lover. Mother lover. That's cool. I mean, I think, I think we all are mother lovers in some way. Uh, mix. It's a song. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, that tells you how much I know. Uh, mixed collections. What is the best list to call today? Most of the numbers we generated from REI Automator is either wrong number or not interested. Is there anything you can recommend? Thanks. Yeah, Mix. Um, never used REI Automator. Um, so I don't know what uh, where they're pulling their data from. So I can't really tell you what's going on there. What I would say is uh, most of the time, if properties come already skip traced, then it's not going to be tremendous. Um, batch skip tracing does the best job without a doubt. Um, so get your list, put them into batch and maybe get different results. Um, but listen, drive for dollars, tired multifamily, vacant houses. And now we're going to have to get into owners with equity, <clears throat> owners with equity, owners that own those properties, uh, that are built before 1990. They've owned it seven years, under 2,000 square feet, and um, they're owner-occupied. We're going to have to start calling them. There you go. Do you want to know what's funny about this question? Yeah. Is I love how there's like probably 100 people that call you Brett. I know. Brett. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. It should be a new nickname. It is. Well, listen. Uh, my wife called me Chad for the first uh, night that we hung out. She said I looked like a Chad, and uh, that's what she was going to call me. Now, she calls me other things since then, but, um, you know. Jose, Brett, has there been ever been family members of elderly sellers who come after wholesalers saying they took it? Yeah, of course, if, you if that's the feeling. Here, here's how you protect yourself from that, Jose, is never, ever, ever do I, would I, Put a property under contract without talking to a family member if somebody is over the age of 65. Seriously. 
Uh, maybe 70. I think it's more 70. But my, my acquisition managers know if it's like, you know, if it's a single gal or guy sitting at home, um, we need to have somebody else participate. We need their we need their sons. We need their daughters. We need their brothers. We need their sisters. We need uh, the uh, I I've, I've had a priest come one time, right? Because that's they did, literally had no family, but they went to church every single day. So the priest came by the whole thing, broke it all down, made sure that everything was understandable, went very smooth. So we always bring it in because that is uh, that's a risk. Yeah, I mean. Um, you never want to. You never want to get into that. You never want to get into, and and especially if the family. See what happens is, um, the family for a lot of people have to use uses the funds from the property to help supplement the the life of of their loved one living with them, right? That's that's what it usually comes from. They need the help. They need the the money. They need to have that. So one, um, we buy properties in as is condition. So it's not like these are beautiful properties. These are properties that need to be renovated. So the price point is fine. I'm fine with that. It's just the family is the family's expectations the same as the seller. That's really important. If the seller's like, yeah, if I get this price, I'll sell it. And the family's like, no, it's worth this much more, blah, 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 blah. We've had people cancel and we've canceled with them. If we can't get a, if we we thought it was great and everything was moving great and then the family steps in and they're like that's one of the only reasons honestly that we that we cancel deals because our numbers are tight we know the numbers uh, our buyer base is bomb so we know we can sell them for a lot um, and but if a family member I don't care if I'm making we we were making fifty k on a deal and the family members came in and I talked to them uh, and uh, canceled the deal. Now, are those family members going to try to just resell it or are they going to try to flip it? Are they going to try to do something sneaky? Maybe. But I'm not playing the game. There's too many deals. There's too many opportunities. I don't want to get stuck with my brain power and my energy going towards a lawsuit that I have to fight and defend myself for the next three, six, a year. I'd rather just be free and clear. Fine, whatever. That 50K is not worth my mindset being screwed up for the next six months. It's not worth me taking my attention off of what's actually providing value to the community to go do this over here. Don't do the wrong things. Just be honest and, and make sure that the family members are involved for sure. Make sure everything everything is is signed off with, with the family. And you got to ask them. You got to really push for it. And you got to say, listen, I'm uncomfortable um, just doing this transaction without somebody else from your family. Uh, I, I've just done too many deals that I need before we move forward. I need somebody else from the family to sign off on this and make sure that um, this is in your best interest. Easy peasy. There you go. Uh, this will be the last one, right? Yeah. We're right at time. Man, this flew. It did. What an exciting 90 minutes. Guys, thank you so much for participating. Uh, the show is really silly if it's just me up here talking uh, all the time so thank you for your participation um, we'll be back next week with the full crew with Albert and Ryan it's going to be absolutely incredible and then we'll really break down some goals to getting to a million dollars and that'll be a great show so make sure that you do that and make sure that you join us for that and uh, make sure that on Mondays you're, you're, you're watching Wholesale Hotline with the, um, uh, the incredible Pace Morby the unstoppable Jamil Damji and myself. And uh, on Wednesdays we go live and I try to bring in the best, 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 best people to uh, to talk to and answer questions, the people that are in the thick of things and um, come with really strong mindset and really great um, pillars for being a strong entrepreneur. All right, so join us Wednesdays for Brent Daniels Live. Uh, that's at 10 a.m. just like this show. Um, Brandon. What paperwork will the title require from the seller so we can help prepare them? The first thing is an identity statement. And so they'll fill out all the information on who they are because there's a lot of people, Brendan D, that are named Brendan D, right? There's a lot, or whatever your last name is, Douglas or Davis or Daniels, whatever it is, right? It's, it's, there's, there's other Brent Daniels on the planet. So they want to make sure that it's me 
and not some other person that has a judgment or something like that on them. So, um, yeah, the identity statement's the big one, and then that'll let them know what debts are owed on there also, and it'll let them uh, know specifically who this is. All right? Awesome. Great show, guys. Uh, millionaire Before 30. Let's let's put it up one more time, the blueprint, Honda. Do a deal. Go full time into this thing. Put your time and effort while you are strong, while you are young, while you are you have that fire, right? Let's get as much of our work in as possible, as early as possible, so that we can just really build that momentum. Kill the debt. Don't be paying every. Don't give ROI to somebody else. Uh, and it, you're already paying taxes, interest. You know, this is the truth. The average person from January to October is working to pay interest and taxes. Do you know that? Google that. It's bananas. The average per worker. The rest of the time is just that's discretionary spending. But for the most part, people are living off of credit cards, mortgages, car payments, student loans, uh, income tax, Social Security, all that, right? January through October, well, uh, to October, through September. It's three months that people have of actually bringing that money home to do something to invest. That's what's called the rat race. The rat race is debt. The rat race is a job. Those two things. Kill the debt. Do go, go full-time in this business. Invest in assets, baby, and financial freedom. I love you. We'll see you next week. You're the best. Go out there. Take serious action. Remember, keep your house clean. Protect your health and, and, and continuously increase your value to the world and you will live an incredible life. I love you. See ya. I ran up a check, I might do it again. Enemies close, have me thinking they're friends. Ten toes down, I'll be free until the end. Crib outside the city, I don't feel safe in my hands. Took so many years, I'm just waiting for the wins. I'm in debt to no one but the one who took my sins. I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend. If I do it once, I do it again. Add it up, add it up.